Okay, let us now resume on the second to the last topic for behavioral learning theories. Now, itong last na dalawang uh, theory under behavioral learning theories ay tinatawag nating neo-behaviorism. Why? Now, yung mga iba't ibang psychologist na under sa neo-behaviorism, hindi lang naman ano to eh, latent learning at saka social learning, meron pa ring iba na mga learning theories na under sa neo-behaviorism. Bakit neo-behaviorism? Ito mga psychologists na ito, naniniwala sila na isang individual ay hindi lang daw nakadepende sa SR or stimulus response. Kumbaga daw, hindi lang tayo natututo dahil sa stimulus na na-encounter natin at sa nagiging response natin, but rather as individuals, we are able to think. Okay? So, parang pinaghalo siyang cognitive and behaviorism. Nakuha? So, first, latent learning. Now, more likely, hindi naman daw si Edward Tolman talaga yung nag-originate nito, but he developed it further. Again, latent learning, Edward Tolman. Now, Tolman's theory combines the advantages of stimulus response theories and cognitive field theories. Gaya ng nasabi natin kanina for neo-behaviorism. Neo-behaviorism, a combination of cognitive and behavior or stimulus response. Also, it is called as purposive behaviorism. Why is it called, why is latent learning called as purposive behaviorism? Because Edward Tolman believes that, no? We are doing something, we are behavior, behaving in a way na with a purpose. Kaya daw natin ginagawa yung mga bagay na ginagawa natin kasi we have a purpose in our mind. Kaya tinawag natin purposive behaviorism. Why are you acting like that, no? Bakit ka pasaway or bakit ka jolly or bakit ganyan ka mag-response? It is because we have a purpose. Okay? So, in short, sabi na lang natin, inside the classroom, bakit may mga estudyante tayo na gustong-gusto yung nagka-catch sila ng attention ng teacher o ng classmates nila? So, ginagawa nila yon dahil may purpose sila. Okay? So, purpose, behavior, purposive behaviorism. Now, okay. Here, in his experiment, no, meron siyang ginawang maze, just like this one. And Edward Tolman, he worked with the rats then. Nakuha? So, in the experiment, Tolman placed hungry rats in a maze with no reward for finding their way through it. He also studied a comparison group of rats, of course, that was rewarded with food at the end of the maze. So, more likely, nag-group siya into, sa ibang articles, dalawa lang daw yung group. Yung first group is yung mga gutom na rats na kahit pa nahanap nila yung way nila, okay, nahanap nila yung way nila palabas ng maze, wala naman silang reward na natanggap. Meron naman daw yung another set of group is that nang mahanap nila yung labasan ng maze, sila ay nakatanggap ng reward or ng food. Sa so group 1, from day 1 to 17, after they were able to finish the maze, walang food or walang reward. Delayed reward, ito ay hinati niya sa dalawa. Sa so first na pag, ano to, paglabas ng rats doon sa maze, no, wala silang food. And na-realize ni Tolman na mas matagal nilang na-accomplish yung maze dahil walang reward. Pero later, nung lagyan niya na ng reward, no, yung end ng maze, nalaman ng mga rats na nandoon, no, nandoon yung reward, mas naging mabilis na ngayon yung kanilang paglabas doon sa maze. And, Oh, sorry, nagkabaliktat yung group 1. Then, yung sa group 3 naman, walang reward. Okay? Na ibinigay si Tolman after 
um, makalabas sila doon sa maze. As the honor enforced rats explore the maze, they were able to develop a cognitive map. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng cognitive map? Cognitive, of course, in the brain, no? Map. It is a mental picture of the layout of the maze. Nakuha. Say, for example, since bago kayo sa isang lugar, no? You were not familiar with sa pasikot-sikot ng daan. Nakuha. Pero as you go past it every day, no? Dahil sa araw-araw mo siyang dinadaanan, later on, kahit na nasa bahay ka lang, and mentally, iniisip mo kung ano yung dadaanan mo, yung mga pasikot-sikot, nakabuo ka na ng illustration sa isip mo doon sa daan na particular mong dinadaanan. So, that is what you call cognitive map. Okay? So, in other definition, it is a mental illustration of the layout of your environment. Say, for example, sa pasikot-sikot din sa bahay, okay? yung bahay ninyo, layout or illustration siya, ng environment mo na nasa isip mo. So, that is cognitive map. Nakukuha? Okay. After 10 sessions in the maze without reinforcement, food was placed in a gold box at the end of the maze. As soon as the rats became aware of the food, they were able to find their way through the maze quickly. Just as quickly as the comparison group which has been rewarded with food all along. Now, this is what we call latent learning. Learning that occurs but is not observable in behavior until there is a reason to demonstrate it. No? Ibig sabihin, ito daw yung klase ng learning na maaring natututunan natin siya ngayon, no? pero mas um, observable siya kapag alam nung learner na kailangan niya nang i-apply. Nakuha? Say for example, sa elementary, more likely... Ituturo sa atin mga concepts. Pero later on in our life, we became aware and we realized that those concepts are essential in our day-to-day -day living since it is applied in real life scenario. So, latent learning. Uha. So, here is a sample of the maze, no? Okay. So, cognitive map, it is a mental illustration of your environment. So, the result, okay, example. So, we have here an example. Stephen's dad drives him to school every day. In this way, Stephen learns that route from his house to his school. But he's never driven there himself. Okay? So, he has not had a chance to demonstrate that he's learned the way. One morning, Stephen's dad has to leave early for a meeting. So, he can't drive Stephen to school. Instead, Stephen follows the same route on his bike that his dad would have taken in the car. Stephen had learned the route to school but had not had no need to demonstrate his knowledge earlier. So, anong napapansin natin dito? No? So, meron tayong cognitive map. So, initially, nung kasama pa ni Stephen, yung kanyang father papunta sa kanilang school, sa kanyang school, no, so, he was able to familiarize yung dinadaanan nila. Nakuha. And later on, nung na-familiarize niya na, hindi pa naman kasi siya pumunta na mag-isa doon, though, sila ni Papa niya magkasama, familiar na siya dun sa daan. Pero, one morning, unexpectedly, na hindi niya makakasama yung Papa niya papunta ng school. So, ano nangyari? Yung kanyang learning... No, yung natutunan niya na daan papuntang kanyang school, siya kanya ngayon nagamit noong kailangan niya na. So, that is what I call latent learning. Learning that we have previously, hindi natin siya totally na-realize not unless it is demonstrated or needed in a particular situation. And also, with the help of the cognitive map, no, with the help noong na-familiarize niya na daan, Kaya, nai-apply niya yung kanyang learning na ito pala yung daan papunta sa school. Okay, so that is what we call latent learning, cognitive map. And of course, purposive, no, purposive behaviorism in a way na 
Bakit niya dinemonstrate yung learning? Of course, with the purpose. What is his purpose? Of course, makapunta sa kanyang school. Okay, so that is the Latin learning. Now, Edward Tolman proposed that people and animals are active information processes and not passive learners as behaviorism had suggested. So, we are able to think ano, and to process information. Now, Tolman developed a cognitive view of learning that has become popular in modern psychology. Tolman believed that individuals do more than merely respond. So, hindi lang daw tayo basta nagre-respond doon sa stimulus sa ating environment. No? They act on beliefs, attitudes, changing conditions, and they strive toward goals. Tolman is virtually the only behaviorist to found the stimulus response theory unacceptable. Okay, because reinforcement was not necessary for learning to occur. He felt behavior was mainly cognitive. No? So, sabi niya, yung learning natin, hindi naman daw all the time. No? Through response. Di ba sabi sa mga previews na mga theories na mas natututo na tayo kapag ka merong uh, reward na ibinibigay. Pero sabi niya, natututo pa rin naman daw tayo kahit walang reward. Just like, for example, yung mga rat, right? Na walang ibinigay na reward or reinforcement. They are still able to come out with the maze. Nakalabas sila dun sa maze. Even, wala silang um, reward na nakuha. Okay? So, sabi niya dito talagang, ano siya eh, umupost siya doon sa paniniwala ng mga behaviorist, no? Na, unacceptable daw yung stimulus response because reinforcement was not necessary for learning to occur. No? Kaya pa rin nating matuto kahit walang reinforcement or sinasabi nating reward. He felt behavior was mainly cognitive. Ibig sabihin yung nagiging behavior daw natin no? is a result of the process of our mind. Okay, so that is latent learning. Though it is short, no? Um, Idiretso na lang natin sa social learning theory. Is it okay? Si kasi very short. Very short lang naman yung latent learning. So, social learning, I guess you are already aware or familiar with this one. Okay? So, social learning, it is author, uh, theorized by Albert Bandura. People learn from one another through observation, imitation, and modeling. No? So, when we say social learning, this is very different from social cultural development theory, okay? So, social learning is that, according to Albert Bandura, we learn through observation or observing others, imitation, and modeling. The theory has often been called a bridge between behaviorist and cognitive learning theories because it encompasses attention memory and motivation now observational learning children observe the people around them behaving in various ways okay so sabi sa social learning or uh, observational learning no na tayo daw as individuals will learn by observing other people through observation so they still remember the bobo doll experiment familiar Okay, so ito yung experiment na ito, no, si Albert Bandura daw, meron siyang isang doll na nilagay sa, sa isang room. Tapos, may mga bata na nandoon, pero parang nagpanggap siya na hindi niya alam na may mga bata. So, anong ginawa niya? Yung doll daw ay sinuntok-suntok niya, no? Tapos, to the point na tinajak-tajakan niya, hinampas-hampas niya. Okay? Then, later on, lumabas siya doon sa room pero still observing kung ano yung magiging response or reaction noong mga bata doon sa iniwan niyang doll kasi pag alis niya ng room yung doll nandoon pa rin sa, sa room nakuha so after noon, nandoon na siya na inobserve niya yung mga bata kung ano yung gagawin ng mga bata, nakita niya na no, ito mga bata kung ano yung ginawa niya sa doll Ganon din yung ginawa ng mga 
bata. In short, that is observational learning. Ito mga bata, natutu natutunan nila yung violence kasi, yun nga, di ba yung ginawa naman ni Bandura is parang harsh siya, di ba? Ganun, di ko ano yung ginawa ni Bandura, yun din yung ginawa ng mga bata doon sa doll. So, that is observational learning. Reinform reinforcement can be internal and external. External reinforcement, if a child wants approval from parents or peers, and internal reinforcement, feeling happy about being approved. Nakuha. Children will have a number of models with whom they identify. Okay. Especially nowadays. Right? Dito sa generation natin ngayon, especially yung mga K-pop, yan, di ba? Ina-idolize yan ng mga kabataan ngayon. So, ano yung tendency? From part, a mere observation, kung paano sila sumayaw, kumanta, yung kanilang fashion, ano nangyayari sa mga kabataan ngayon? Upon observing the different idols that they have, no? Ganun na rin yung kanilang ginagawa. Yung kanilang panunood, yung kanilang pagsayaw, pagkanta, kahit nga yung mga kanta na hindi naman natin alam kung ano yung meaning, kinakanta pa rin, kahit na Korean or what. Right? So, that is observational learning. This may be people in their immediate world, as, such as parents or older siblings, or it could be fantasy characters from a cartoon, di ba? Pwede nilang gayahin yun. Like, say, for example, yung iba, ginagaya si Mr. Bean. Right? Yung sayaw. Then, before kasi si Mr. Bean, di nagsasalita. So, ginagaya din nila yung way ng communication ni Mr. Bean. Ni... Ay pa ba, Spongebob? Mga superheroes, Power Rangers, masyado na bang old? <laughs> di ba yung mga current na yun, mga Avenger, ganun. So, ginagaya, di ba, di ba yung mga kung ano yung nakikita daw? And, it could be people in the media. The motivation to identify with a particular model is that they have a quality which the individual would like to possess. So, hindi lang tayo basang kumukopya or gumagaya ng behavior ng ibang tao but rather ina-identify din natin kung ito gusto ko tong ano kopyahin gusto ko siyang gayahin ito ayoko di ba so meron din daw ano to gumagamit pa rin ng cognitive okay so meron daw tayong uh, kakayanan to identify kung sino yung gusto nating i-observe and i-imitate okay so identification ano meron sa identification Identification occurs with another person, which is the model, and involves taking on observed behaviors, values, beliefs, and attitudes of the person of whom you are identifying. So, ito daw nangyayari kapag yung isang person, no, siya ay inobserve. Siyempre, that, yung identification is, ano naman yun, di ba? pinipili niya kung ano yung kung sino yung gusto niyang gayahin taking observed behaviors values no hindi lang naman yung fashion it could be behavior niya yung value yung paniniwala or beliefs then attitude attitudes of the person of whom you are identify identification is different to imitation as it may involve a number of behaviors being adopted no so whereas Imitation usually involves copying a single behavior. So, when we say imitation, single behavior lang yung ginagaya. While, identification, kasama na yung behavior, yung values, beliefs, and attitudes. Nakuha? Okay. So, mediational process. Okay? It's a bridge between traditional learning theory and cognitive approach okay then unlike Skinner and Badura believes that humans are active information processors and think about the relationship between the behavior and its consequences now so we are not just merely are responding then waiting on the consequence but rather nakikita daw natin yung relationship between the behavior and its consequence Observational learning could not occur unless cognitive process were at work. Nakuha? And therefore, individuals do not automatically observe the behavior of a model and imitate it. Their 
is some thought prior to imitation and this consideration is called the mediation process observing the behavior and imitating it or not nakuha when we say mediational process no we do not simply copy or imitate the behavior of a particular person but rather after observing we have the choice to imitate it or not so nag-work yung ating cognitive iniisip natin kung worth it ba na copying ko to or hindi so that is what you call mediational process observing the behavior then imitating it or not after the observation it could be imitated or not so that is what I call mediational process. Okay. So we have here four mediational process. First is the attention. For a behavior to be imitated, it has to grab your attention. Of course, kapag yung isang person, no, hindi niya nagagrab yung attention mo, then more likely, hindi mo talaga siya gagayahin. If you do not find that person, no, parang interesting or yung behavior niya for you is not interesting then more likely hindi mo siya i-imitate or hindi mo siya gagayahin right so that is attention first attention it should um catch your attention grab your attention okay so first attention second retention how well the behavior is remembered so if Sa mediational process na, no, kapag pagkatapos mong bigyan ng attention yung behavior ng isang tao, no, na-catch niya or na yung attention mo doon sa kanya, then more likely, kung ano man yung behavior niya, yung values, attitudes, or beliefs, or kung ano pa man yung mga actions and movements niya, it will be retained, no, or magiging uh, familiar sa atin yun, mara-remember, mara-recall natin yun sa ating mind no the behavior may be noticed but is not always remembered which is obviously it obviously prevents imitation so pwede na nakatch yung attention mo pero hindi mo naman ma-retain sa utak mo or hindi mo ma-retain yung behavior na na-observe mo okay it is important that a memory of the behavior is formed to be performed by the observer of course no so after giving attention dapat ma-retain sa isip mo kung ano yung attention na ibinigay mo or kung ano yung behavior na na-observe mo through giving attention okay so may possibility na after attention hindi mo naman maalala kung ano yung ano yung pin-observe mo right so dapat after attention there must be retention wherein you are able to remember no, or to retain yung behavior na iyong na-observe. Next is reproduction. Now, of course, after giving attention, after mong ma-remember or ma-familiarize yung kanyang behavior, now with reproduction, ito na yung kakayanan mo to do or to perform the behavior as to what you have observed. This is the ability to perform the behavior that the model has just demonstrated. Say for example, di ba kapag mm, nagtuturo ng sayaw, di ba? So first, yung choreographer nandoon sa front, di ba? Ikaw naman na gustong matuto or gayahin yung kanyang steps, first, magbibigay ka muna ng attention sa kanya, right? If you focus mo yung attention mo sa kanya, then habang pinapanood mo siyang sumayaw or gawin yung mga steps, no? Ikaw naman, nire-retain mo na sa isip mo, no? Ini-encode mo na sa isip mo or pina-familiarize mo na sa isip mo kung ano yung mga steps na ginagawa niya. And after you're giving attention, after, after observing, after the retention, here comes yung gagayahin mo na. Ikaw na mismo yung gagawa ng mga steps. Nakuha? So, that is reproduction. And of course, motivation. The will to perform the behavior. So, the rewards and punishment that follow a behavior will be considered by the observer. If the perceived rewards outweigh 
the perceived cost, then the behavior will be more likely to be imitated by the observer. If the vicarious reinforcement is not seen to be important enough to the observer, then they will not imitate the behavior. Now, motivation is the will to perform the behavior. If you find it that relevant, no, yung behavior, yung attitude na iyong inobserve, na iyong retain at ginaya para sa iyo, no? Kailangan maganda, no? Necessary siya for you to build or to to grow or to learn. So more likely gagayahin natin. Pero if you find it not that relevant or unnecessary, then hindi natin i-imitate yung kanyang behavior. Nakuha? So, motivation part yun. No? Part yun ng mediational process is that is your will to perform. Ano ba yung nagpupush sa'yo para gayahin yun at gawin yun? Or i-imitate yung behavior na iyong na-observe. If you find it relevant, then more likely i-imitate mo yun. Diba? If you find it not that relevant, then more likely hindi mo na yun we will not imitate the behavior. So, that is motivation. Yes, finally, and that ends chapter 4. Okay. So, please remember, ha, under behavioral learning theories, we have five. First is the classical conditioning by Ivan Pavlov. Second, we have uh, connectionism by Edward Thorndike. Then, we also have operant conditioning by B.F. Skinner. And of course, latent learning by Edward Toman. And last but not the least is what? Yung diniscuss pa lang natin ngayon, social learning or observational learning theory by Albert Bandura. So, please do familiarize these learning theories. Kasi, gaya ng gaya, sinasabi natin earlier, no? You, will, you might encounter these learning theories all throughout your prof ed na mga courses and of course no you should be working with your module and we are expecting na of course kasabay ng pagkatapos ng video na to is yung accomplishment or achievement yun naman with your module so let us try to check your module Okay, here. Neo behavioral learning theories. First is latent learning. It check natin yung activity. Now, with the activity for latent learning, based on Tolman's experiment, you are to paraphrase in your own words kung ano yung nangyari sa kanyang experiment. Do you still remember yung kay Tolman na experiment? Di ba discuss natin? Okay, so ipa paraphrase din yun. Then, you make a conclusion doon sa kanyang experiment. Nakuha? Of course, you will still use the same format for your answer sheet. Clear? Now, to be followed by the following questions. What is purposive behaviorism all about? So, gagawa kayo ng synthesis. Then, what are the highlights or the main concepts of Tolman's theory. Define each in your own words. And for express, you are to reflect, no? Do you agree with Tolman's beliefs? Diba? Nung sa last part, no? Meron tayong inelaborate doon na para kay Tolman yung paniniwala niya. Do you agree with that? If yes, why? If not, then why? Okay, then cite examples. Three examples each where the concept of Tolman theory is applied. So, you fill in the table here. Three classroom example or real life example for Latin learning and cognitive map. And of course, be guided with the learning rubric. Okay. Last but not the least is of course social learning. Please ha, read your module. Kasi baka may mga discussion tayo here sa ating um, video na hindi natin na, na elaborate ng mabuti or nakaligtaan natin i-discuss that is, which is included in your module. So, much better na mag-read and mag-watch din tayo ng video.
Okay, so for the activity, ganun din sa social learning. Ipaparaphrase din nyo, din ninyo yung experiment ni Bandura, which is the Bobo Doll experiment. Then of course, you are to make a conclusion from Bandura's experiment. Then, you answer the following questions. What is social learning theory all about? You make a synthesis. Then, you are to make a Venn diagram to point out the similarities and differences of behaviorism by Pavlov, Thorndike, and Skinner. Two, I differentiate yung behaviorism ha sa neo-behaviorism ni Tolman at Bandura. Differentiate ha using a Venn diagram. Then, explain your Venn diagram. Then, what do you think are the what do you think you have learned through social learning who are your social models and of course express you are to reflect on the following question so you read then reflect rubrics be guided and of course since last na yon, a topic for the chapter chapter 4 meron tayo ulit evaluation so, you answer the situational items here. And again, kung may underline, if it asks you to explain your answer, then do explain your answer. This is 1, 2, 15. And consensus na part. Now, here, in a group of 4, so maghahanap kayo ng 4 or 3 pa, of course, including you yourself, to form a group. Do the following dis and discuss your answer. So first, get a copy of a detailed lesson plan in your field of spe specialization from a teacher and capture the instances where Thorndike's law of learning are reflected or applied. Use the grid table below. Okay, so say some lesson plan. Okay, you ask, of course, ha? Huh? Alay naman. So, kailangan mag-greet kayo sa teacher na inyong hihiraman ng lesson plan of your own specialization, of course. And you ask. Okay? Siyempre, kailangan with good manners pa rin tayo. Kasi hahingi tayo ng tulong sa ibang teachers. Then, you fill in the table below. Ano ba yung mga sa part ng lesson plan? Okay, sa kada part ng lesson plan, sa ano mapapansin yung law of learning dito nakuha. Then ano yung implications niya to teaching? Claro. Then here interview three teachers on how they apply operant conditioning concepts in facilitating a learner-centered classroom. Remember, operant conditioning is about reward and punishment. So, you ask three teachers paano nila na-apply ito. Then, gumawa kayo ng teaching strategy bank. Okay? So, para ano lang siya, table. Then, parang nag-ano lang kayo doon, input nag input ng kung ano yung natutunan ninyo mula sa interview with your teachers. And of course, after creating a teaching strategy bank, you make a conclusion. And you choose a topic in your field of spe specialization. Suggest some teaching strategies and applications on how you could reflect the following concepts from Tolman. So, ito. So, here, sa table, if you fill in, in you siya, by choosing a topic in your field of specialization, then reflect on the following concepts from Tolman and Bandura. Okay, then, ano yung mga teaching strategies and applications with the use of cognitive map doon sa inyong topic na napili, yung latent learning. So on, so forth. Okay, so that ends all the discussion for midterms. Now, if you still have questions and clarifications, Please raise it through our group chat. Okay? Then, hopefully, na-elaborate ko or na-discuss ko naman kung ano yung mga dapat i-discuss regarding the activities, especially with the consensus. Now, eto ha, alayan ka mo pagbasa-basa. Okay? 
yung tendency, kapag hindi tayo nagbabasa ng module natin, yung nangyayari, paulit-ulit yung itinatanong natin sa group chat. And sometimes, we find it irrelevant na. Okay? Kaya tayo hindi aware no, sa mga dapat gawin kasi hindi tayo nagbabasa ng directions. So, please read the directions okay, para hindi na paulit-ulit yung question na in range natin sa group chat. So, kaya nga lagi namin ko in-encourage na read, read, and read. Kasi nandito naman sa module yung lahat ng kailangan ninyong matutunan at lahat ng guide na kailangan ninyo. And of course, ano din naman, may mga clarifications, yun yung mga erase natin sa group chat. Nakuha? So, adya, kaya mo yan. God will help you to accomplish your module. No? And of course, sabi pa nga, um, do your best and God will do the rest. Of course, kailangan may part ka din. No, which is of course to give time for your module. This is not for me, no? Kasi ako, sumusweldo naman ako, ako alam na natin 'to, no? Pero what matters the most is that you, na ikaw, matuto ka at matanggap mo yung learning that will prepare you for your future as a future teacher. Nakuha. So keep working, keep doing your best. Alam ko na kaya mong ma-accomplish itong module na to. Kaya mong ma-accomplish itong semester na to despite of the circumstances that we have. Just have faith and trust the Lord. And of course, do your best. Thank you and God bless you.